Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some uh, coloring techniques. This is one I just colored of dark side inside of the uh, app Procreate. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, let's go to the layers. I can show you a bit of a breakdown. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is just toggle these off. I'm just going to delete them. Actually, what's I need that line art. I'm going to delete this. And let's see, you can sw tap on one. Let me see if this works. I've never tried this. Swipe over and highlight all these other ones. Can we delete all these at once? Nope. There's probably a way, but a better man than me would have to explain it. So I'm just going to painstakingly delete each one of these. All that hard work, just, just gone, folks. Just gone. Now remember that you can take the layer and set it to the top. And even if it's a flat and black and white layer, you can set it to multiply. Keep in mind too, you can go over to my DeviantArt if you want to follow along. Download the high res version of this in all its glory, and then you can uh, you know follow along uh, identically. So what I'm going to do is add a new layer, put that below the multiply layer. Notice this one's at normal mode, and I'm just going to drop in uh, any color really, but I, I usually start with like a a blue or maybe something a little darker. Just kind of drag and drop that. Oh, is that on the liner? Oh, it's set to a reference layer. Okay, so I don't want that. Let's go ahead and delete that. Or not delete that, but take this off reference. And this, this can be good when filling in the other colors. But this particular part, I actually just want to flood fill. So that's that. And so now what I want to do here is just block in uh, some of the color, some of the flats, basically. And probably the best way to do this would be, uh, let's see, I, you know, I'll, I'm just going to drop it in right over top. I know a lot of people like to select areas and cut it. I don't know. I've never had an issue where I needed that to be that way. I know that is the uh, proper way. So if you want to do it that way, cool. But I'm just going to isolate areas of the painting here, or painting, my goodness, comic illustration. And I'll go through certain areas like these flames. I'm just going to paint those over top. So I'm just going to go right through here. And you can draw this in. You can draw a selection first. I like the selection tool inside of this app. It's just really, really easy to use. You can stop, re, uh, relocate where you're at. Again, I'm going to go right through the flames here. Don't need those. Not yet anyways. I can rotate this because I tend to pull more confidently downward towards my my belly I don't know if you guys need that little bit of information but hey that's it is what it is okay so now uh, what what is this skin color I think it's like a is it a grayish blue I can't even remember um, I just colored this thing but I'll just pick a gray it just needs to be noticeably different than what's on there I'll add a layer um, and drag and drop yeah something like that and then, but like I said, a lot of people say that you should cut this out. But if I needed to, really all I have to do is drop the selection here. Or actually, I could just leave the selection there. Forgive me. Is it selected? Yeah, see those little bars? Everywhere where there's not those little bars, that's an open selection. So I could just go back to, uh, if you hold the little S, it'll bring back up your selection tool. I can click invert. And then I could go back to the previous layer, do a three-finger swipe. Nope. Oh. Go back to a two finger tap, forward, back. Okay, invert that again. So I'm gonna hold that little S, invert it back. Now do the three finger swipe. And see it just cut out that little shape of his face right there. Um, again, I don't need that, but I just wanna show you that you can still get there if you do need that. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, I seem to do fine with just uh, dropping these over top. now. The reason why this might not always work, at least for digital, is if you're going to use more blending modes uh, on this area. But what I want to show you here is actually a combination of things. I'm going to put um, a layer over top of this, and I'm going to set this to um, a clipping mask. And clipping mask layers are really cool because what you can do here is you can airbrush. And this isn't even the one that, the way that I did the other one that I just showed you. But I just want to show you there's multiple ways to get the job done here and clipping masks are really effective because what you can do is you can start shading in 
you know the you know you want to get some kind of uh, idea of plane changes and you know depth dimension here some rounded form and volume so you just start with a soft brush and just block some of that in now the brush itself is just set to soft brush no blending modes but because it's a clipping mask notice that I didn't go outside of the confinements of the underlying layer that it's referencing and I could still do a bunch of neat things here I can adjust blending modes and uh, I can punch back the opacity if it's too much uh, all sorts of fun stuff so you know I could change it to a color burn if I want to see it as something darker uh, I think I can even duplicate it right over top let me see here multiply so say I like where it's at position wise but it's not dark enough multiply is going to keep darkening yeah, and see how it automatically created it as a clipping mask. So, again, I don't need that, but I just want to show you that that's, that's pretty cool that you can uh, easily add more effects like that. And then you can keep adding to it. You don't have to stop there. Uh, let's see. Let's scale it down. So I try to hold back on too many soft edge shadows uh, in the very beginning. I guess it doesn't really matter because you, you really just want to build all this up. Uh, with a little bit of uh, synchronicity. Actually, I don't even know if that's a word, but we'll say it's a word. What if it was a word? So synchronicity, and basically just you know using it, it should all work harmoniously. That is a word. I'm pretty sure of that one. So you just keep building up on it. So let's say, let's say that's enough for now, and then we want to add in some um, harder edge shadows because that's really what cell shading usually is. Now notice I added a layer there. It didn't. Sync, uh, clip, it didn't add a clipping mask to that other one. So let me add that. And anything in this little hierarchy will reference that bottom layer. So now I can jump in here with my selection tool and I can you know, define some uh, harder edge shadows. I can even change this to a little bit darker brush. I can make sure I can see it a bit more clearly. Set this to multiply. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. Let me back that up a little bit. Find my airbrush. Soften that up. Softly soften that up. So very, very gently. Nice and easy. But yeah, so like that, you can see there's just a small incremental change, but I don't have to worry about my selection no more, which is really, uh, you know empowering I guess so I can grab like any shape that I want to see here say something like this scale up my brush brush some of this in and since it's on that other floating layer and it's clipped to that area I can erase it back I can smudge it I can do all kinds of neat stuff so again this is just kind of how I develop the uh, the colors. I just kind of add these little plane changes, little dab here, a little, little bit here and there, and uh, yeah, not too scientific, just slowly adding little bits and pieces. But yeah, I can't stress enough how much I love the selection tool. Uh, I remember coloring in Photoshop. I mean, I still color in Photoshop, but it's, it's not nearly as easy for me to color uh, and control the selections as it is in this software. It's just so easy to draw this exactly where I'm picturing that shape. And Photoshop always felt like I was kind of just throwing the shapes in there. And maybe that's a good thing. Like you don't need these to be as perfect as you think they might need to be. Uh, it's more or less the process of overlapping these, you know, bits of cell shading and shadows and, and highlights and bringing it all together. But uh, it does feel good when you are getting what you're kind of imagining and envisioning and this tool allows you to do that. It's very uh, accurate. I was really searching for the accurate word there. Okay, so I, uh, you know, I won't go into this too much, but you see I'm just grabbing mainly just plane changes like the bottom of the nose is obviously a pretty significant plane change. So I, I'd want that to be noticeable like that. And then don't be afraid to go over certain areas. So see how I you know, added this uh, shape by the, by the nose here. If I want to you know, work over to this side and, and fill this in, I don't have to worry about the overlap. Sometimes the overlaps of these 
will actually look pretty cool. And if they don't, I'll show you. Just kind of throw it in there and then maybe blend it back. If this line's bothering you, just, you know, blend them together. And sometimes I'll go back and blend these anyways. Like, I don't always want this solid edge around everything. It actually works better, I think, if you uh, throw it in and then you erase it back. I think that tends to look a little bit more natural. Like, you can see on the top of the head here, it looks more solid lower and then there's like a soft spot at the top sometimes you want that you, just so it breaks up the uh, monotony I think so again just kind of grab certain areas like this and now I'll jump over to a different part of the illustration so you don't get too bored here so and really I did jump the gun you should flat everything but I wanted to hurry up and show you the clipping mask uh, as they related to that flat so let's add another flat let's uh now if we add one and we don't clip it it's gonna start a new layering basically so if I fill in his um, his suit design, or you know, better yet, I'm gonna add to this one real quick because his uh, shoulders are gonna be the same color. So let me select here by holding my finger over the initial base color. Let me isolate this part of the shoulder real quick. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So there, that's all on one layer. It's not touching, so it's real easy to edit that anyways. The neat thing too with these clipping masks is not only do you have these layers above it? You even have this layer and you can just lock transparent pixels by doing a two finger swipe to the right. Uh, so, you know, lots of ways to edit this basically. Um, but we have the clipping mask, I'll just use those. And then now, uh, let's uh, let's get in the, the suit. Uh, let me see here, this one would be pretty easy to select and just paint behind it. So let's try that. So I'm gonna run the selection all the way around the character here. Obviously, this is a pretty basic illustration, so it doesn't get much easier than this as far as generating some kind of flats and you know, working with this. Uh, I guess I could even, now nah, I need to probably go around this way, but I, I could, no, you know what? We can go behind it because we're gonna put this right behind the, the gray. So let's do this, probably make sure I'm not running into those little lines there, little speed lines. They come really close to the helmet here, so that was a bad call. Actually, they go over right there. What was I thinking? Well, folks, I wasn't. That's that's what I was thinking. Okay, so now let's uh, add another layer. And my selection's still there? It's hard to see. Yeah, it is there, right? All right, let's uh, go with another. This suit's kind of a bluish. But something that's just a little bit. Oh, I jumped layers, didn't I? What did I do there? Okay, let's go to here. Add a layer. Fill that in. Let's go with something that's noticeable because that doesn't look very noticeable. There we go. So there's his uh, armor. I think the neck piece was gray. I'll change that as well. But then, again, this is, uh, I, I went behind it now but I can still use the clipping mask effect. I can still lock transparent pixels um, just because, you know, once you separate them, then you add the new layer and then I go, you know, clipping mask. It's gonna do that little hierarchy down arrow. Uh, so yeah, just pay attention to that. And so now, uh, let's, let's just finish flatting this in. Um, let's see what else. The uh, let's get the flames in the eyes. So I'll add a layer. I guess that needs to be on the top. So I'll go back up to here. I think this was the layer I was supposed to stay on and I didn't. Okay, so let's just uh, drop our selection here. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw these ones in. Call me crazy. Let's pick a red. Run that layer. Let's draw. Try to stay within the lines, folks. You can do it. You can do it. As I'm talking to myself, which is kind of weird. But for you guys, I will be weird. I will bring the weirdness to you. Okay, so filling this in, getting this uh, flat layer to work from again. 
These little dots are supposed to be red as well. And to tell you the truth, I actually think I think I, I think I just filled it all red because I end up making the uh, the lines go with the red. Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be a lot quicker, anyways. So I'm gonna make this brush really large, fill this all in because it's easy enough to generate selections uh, just over this area. So I don't need to be so uh, specific about it or whatever. To, you know, it'll work. I promise you. Okay, so select all this. Fill that in. Oop. Okay. Drop the selection. A lot of times when you're doing this, it's good to have the eraser set to the same ink brush so that you can quickly erase back. Or just get really good at coloring and not mess up so much. I was never that good at coloring in the traditional way. Digitally, I love it. And you know, it's funny is I don't even think I started coloring until it, I jumped into digital. Uh, it's and now it makes me want to get better at using markers and stuff like that. But I never, never really got into. It. I got into Prismacolor pencils for a little bit, and never really mastered them. Could never get them to blend like some of the other people that I saw that could do these amazing techniques. I, I should probably try it again. I'm a lot more of a seasoned artist than I, than I was back then. But I, uh, yeah, I just kind of gave up on it. Do a little bit with uh, Prismacolor markers, but that's about it. But digitally, oh boy, I love me some digital coloring. And it's way less messy. Not that Prismacolor pencils are messy. Anyways, back to this. So again, just trying to fill in this area. Probably would have been faster to do a selection, but I don't know, I find this part peaceful, soothing, euphoric, slightly delicious, all right, maybe not delicious, wrong choice of words there. I am trying to buy time as I try to wrap this up. I'll tell you what, being this far uh, zoomed into my work, it's kind of freaky. It's like I'm starting to realize how messy my, uh, my brush strokes are. But as long as it looks good from a distance, it's all that matters, folks. From a distance. Da, na, na. All right, sorry. Oh, I know people are just dropping out of the video hardcore right now. Did he just start singing? This dude cannot sing. Yet. <laughs> After I get those fancy singing classes, I'll be all about it. Okay, so now, there we go. There's dark side, dark seed. It's dark side, right? There he is with the flattened colors, and now we can start having some fun. Oh, the neck piece, my bad. One more. And then we're ready to rock. So the neck piece, I think, is just a gray, like a gray, blue, gray, metal kind of thing going on there. Again, we'll just draw this in real quick. I know it's not the, per se, the right way, but for me, I never send my work to be printed like you know if like comic book separations if that's why people cut and trap the colors uh, I just send them if I do anything I just have it printed you know like I might print this out and stick it to my wall or something so g generally oh you know what I'm gonna do the uh, the sign or whatever his, his chest piece and again since they're not touching I can throw these right on the same layer not a big deal But yeah, so I just print stuff out on paper and this way is more than suffice. So I never have to worry about, but just keep in mind, everything's here when you do it this way. You can still select these. Remember that you can do a quick select of the layer by doing a two finger hold and it will give you everything on that layer selected. 
and you can invert with this little bottom bar right there. So everything you need is right here, even if you want to do it the other way, the more professional way. Again, I don't find it to be necessary. The other thing that you can do is you can get your colors in the realm, the value and the colors uh, by using your sliders as well. So say you drop the color and you're like, nah, it needs to be darker, it needs to be less saturated. You know, sometimes you want to do that before you get building up your colors. Other times you can do it after, it doesn't matter. But all those options are there when you lay it out in this way. So now let's add in uh, some shadows. And you know what, I'm actually gonna go for the light source on the helmet area. So I'm gonna take the helmet area right here, add a layer, set it to uh, clipping mask. Oh, did I, it automatically did it, didn't it? Strange. Okay, so let's take that. Let's set this one to, uh, let's try add. And then I'm going to take the brush color. I'm going to hold my finger over this area. I can lighten this a little bit, but since it's already set to add, it's already going to do that for me. And I can brush in a light source. So I might start with a global kind of light source like this, just to get an idea going, just to get a, a feeling of a roundedness to the, the forms. And then uh, from there, I'll quickly jump into selecting areas like this. Now if they don't touch and it's easy enough to do, you might as well grab a couple areas like that. Use a pretty large brush so that you can hit that whole area. And like I said, you're going to kind of uh, have hot spots and then let it blend out to the edges. And that's what I'm doing there. And then you really want to play around with like what I would say like a step and repeat effect. Like, you know, maybe add a little bit more of a hot spot. Uh, and you can you know, get in that cell shading kind of effect. I don't like that last little shape, but I like that. I think that looks fine. And then also I can, while I'm here, I can get in some edge lighting, something like that. Yeah, that's fine. And then maybe even on the edge of the neck here, just a little bit. And if the edges, uh, you know, by edges, I mean this little piece at the very edge, uh, it doesn't look right. So I'm going to take my smudge brush, just kind of blend that over. So I'll do little things like that as well. And I feel like it needs to be on both sides of that little crack there. So I'm going to add that little piece. And remember, if it's filling in too quickly, even if you're pressing lightly, you can play around with the opacity of the brush itself. Blend that over, just like that. And so what's neat about this, I think, uh, this workflow anyways. So you notice I've got my highlights here and I can really just, you know, rename it and put in HL for highlights. And uh, I can add in another one over top of this. And let's see, if I add one more, automatically sets it to uh, a clipping mask and I can just rename this one and just put S for shadows you know, just to minimize my typing and I really don't even have to switch the brush so I'll show you what I mean there I can set this to multiply like that I can keep the brush set to the same thing same color and it's gonna shadow for me just like that so now I can quickly grab into the side of this uh, piece of the armor Remember, I don't have to get the selection perfect because it's referencing that other area. Just like that. And then kind of continue on my merry way with this effect. Now, also I can, you know, develop more of the side of this or whatever. I just really want to play around with these ideas. Like where can I incorporate a little bit more uh, effect to what I got here? Just kind of keep building up upon these ideas. I don't know that I like that one, but I'll leave it for now. Why not? So like all through here, I might bring this up to about here. Grab this whole side piece. Try something like that. Make the brush real large. Just kind of glance in that area. Now I'm sure if we compare this to the other one I did, it's probably 
totally different or something, but that's just the way it goes. Like you're just going to, I mean, it shouldn't be totally different. You should have a good idea of light source and all that, but I, uh, I kind of wing it folks. Like, yeah, that's, that's what I do. That's how I roll. I wing, I wing it. Um, I don't like that. See, I added this weird edging to the line art there. So I'm gonna have to ignore that because really when I shade that, I realized that there wouldn't be a highlight right there. I just made a boo-boo. So I'm just gonna ignore that. Shade this in. And pretend like I'm uh, coloring someone else's artwork. So then I'll try to fix it right now. But let's see here. Which I don't know, maybe in comics they do fix mistakes like that. Like what do they do? They call up the artist and be like, Dude, you uh, totally messed up here. Were you were you, were you uh, drinking? Were you, were you drunk when you illustrated this? Uh, we got to fix some errors here. And do the, do the, does the colorist fix it? Does the anchor? Do, who does it? I don't know. I just don't know. So if you know, comment in the section below. Let me know who fixes these mistakes. Or they send it all back to the drawing board. Back to the artist. I'm sure they don't worry about it, but you never know. Okay, so shadow that in like so. And uh, I feel like I need to add like a little bit of a, a shadow right here as well. So you can kind of see I hinted to that with the uh, line work. But I feel like a, a shape of shadow would look kind of cool right there. Just a real slight one. And also like right here against the edge. I feel like that would look kind of neat. So yeah, so I just kind of pick at things and, and keep developing it like that. Now also, we can even add this to, let's see, what's the underlying layer? This is just the helmet. So we want to keep this to just the helmet, so that's fine. Um, but also, I'm going to jump back to the highlights now, because again, remember, we don't have to switch the brush, so you kind of want to take advantage of that. And I will continue to... Add in some of the light source. Now, some of this I'm going to go back and add some red, but I can first develop the uh, the initial light source. Get that into place. I can always add a color over top. Doesn't matter. Make that brush a little smaller right there. Okay. And I probably should be time-lapsing this. This video has gotten longer than I suspected. Uh, but I'm going to try to try to give you as much of this in real time, folks. Because I know everybody wants real time. It's more informative, right? So yeah, see how adding those little highlights really starts to, you know, punch it up and bring it off the page. And that's what we're after. So, it, again, it's it's, you know, the culmination of these effects that start to bring this out uh, and don't be afraid to make mistakes you know throw something in there zoom back take a look at it that's usually how you figure out your your uh, your new style techniques right you got to kind of wing it like I said before I'm, I'm into the winging it thing And then you can over select an area and just hit like kind of the middle of it and let it blend off to the edge. So that's kind of what I'm trying to picture there. Even that looks a bit weird. So I'm going to take this and go back to my soft airbrush for the eraser. And I can erase that back just a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything where it's located. And so now let's see. Let's get, well, I do want a, a bit more light source on the back. I don't even know if I need to. Yeah, I don't even have to select this. So there's, are the, there's those areas too where you got to look for those opportunities where you don't have to really develop a selection. So some areas you're going to want to select and other areas you can just, uh, you know, just brush it in there because it's where it's sitting against any uh, edges or whatever. It's not in jeopardy of running over or spilling over into something else. Okay, I think something like that. I do want... To bring out this light source right here as well but I am going to paint that red okay so there's that so now let's go back to his skin texture which would have been the shoulder here and then again we need to be aware of 
what these other th things I can't even see that what is that okay you got the shadow there that's another shadow what is this one I think that might be a mistake you guys check me if I'm wrong there but I don't think that was there was anything on that one so I got a shadow there shadow there was there a light source there was I couldn't see it no I don't think so okay so I want to continue to shade this so let's go to this one here this is our soft shadows so for that let's just rename it SS soft shadows and then SS for solid shadows no that's not gonna work is it uh, hard edge shadows so HS hard shadows just try to simplify it this saves you from typing nobody likes to type nobody okay so yeah soft shadows now I didn't save that color you know what it might be in my swatches though yeah I think it is I think it's I think it's this guy because uh, you know this is your history of colors so it's in there somewhere um, so let's jump into here let's, you know start defining some shapes again you could um, or wait I'm on my soft shadows aren't I aren't I so drop the selection brush that in remember that it's just a shoulder piece so you can go all around it if you need to kind of come up into the divide this is supposed to be the divide of his shoulder anatomy the, the delts the, the deltoids um, hopefully you can see that that's the idea anyways now to the hard edge shadows and I'll just draw in a shape like this remember you can draw multiple selections while you're here and fill that in get a little bit of that line in there like that and I can continue on with that I can draw another one so I really just like the effect that it gives when you build up these little cell shaded looking shadows I think it's just neat it's my cup of tea okay so something like that maybe even a little drop shadow from the uh, the chest plate get some of that in there why not okay there's that and then also uh, he's got this rocky kind of skin thing going on right you could really just get in there and shadow some of that uh, you know if you want it's totally up to you if you don't want to then don't I'm not twisting your arm you don't gotta do it you can stop right now if you want to I don't care I do care I, was, I, I didn't mean that I care just keep going you can do this but you'll never know if you give up right now you'll never know all right so yeah you can get a little bit of the shadows in from each one of those pieces you could do that in the face I think the face that'd be too much um, smaller details you got to be careful that can be distracting but I think on the forehead here you can get some of that in there remember this is all oh that's too dark this is all in the same layer Yeah, I would grab a couple of these larger pieces and and you can shade and obviously highlight these as well uh, but I probably wouldn't go too awfully dramatic with it again I don't want it to look distracting and I think that's yeah I don't think that's too distracting I think that adds to it I like it better on the shoulder so again you can grab like the whole side of this little chunk of rock or whatever he is I don't know what he's got some skin issues I don't know if that's rock or reptile skin um, so yeah so like that we got that in place what else hmm wow this video is like at 34 minutes this is crazy no one's gonna watch this okay so um, what next some highlights so we get the same uh, you know this area going uh, let's just add a layer over top let's again set that to clipping mask let's uh, drop in a blending mode of add and let's grab a lighter color something into a light gray here and then again with the cell shading let's just define a little bit more of a light source not much you got to be real careful with the light source you know it's it's powerful right you don't want to you know you don't want to glare it in there it's got to be subtle 
think subtle. And then I have it uh, up on another screen because I never trust one screen anymore. I mean, if I did trust a screen, it would be the, the iPad. The iPad actually does pretty good for color representation and all that jazz, but um, I've, uh, I've gotten used to not trusting my Cintiq because I will I'll do some color work on there. And if I don't pay attention to the other screen and then I post it, it looks totally different on various posts. And then I feel like a moron because it's not as good as I thought it was. And people were like, dude, your colors are way too saturated. So be careful. And that's probably because I adjusted my screen, uh, my Cintiq, and then I uh, could never get it to calibrate back. And it's older, so, you know, it's kind of on its last leg. So yeah, be careful. Never trust your eyes. Just, uh, or never trust just one monitor, let me put it that way. So again, just kind of selecting these areas, getting a little bit of light source. Can be stronger on that side because it'll be closer to the light. And again, you can blend any of this too. So play around with that concept as well. You can smudge some of this around and sometimes just by reshaping the, the uh, light source or shadow or whatever, it can make it look a bit more impressive. So I'll try that as well. And we'll get a little bit of the light source right here on the shoulder. Like that. Okay. So now, so let's add in some power effects. This is the fun part, folks. For the whole five or six people that stuck around to this duration of the video, now it's going to get fun. Real fun. Okay, so we got, let's define the area. So the red is actually this whole shape, um, which I don't think we really have to do anything special because it's just blocked in. I guess we could lock it, but it doesn't really matter. There's nothing to really spill over into the other area. Um, or no, we do want to lock it, my bad, because it's on top of everything, so you do want to lock it. So you do two finger swipe to the right, you'll see that little checkerboard pattern means lock transparent pixels, and then we can work up from there. But we could still clip the work as well, so however you want to do it, you could do both. But uh, I think that for this, it'll, it'll be simple enough to just block it in right over top of this. So let's go to a highlight brush. Let's pick um, a yellowish orange yellow I guess and then with the highlight brush what happens here just so you know I've already got this highlight brush set to a blending mode of color dodge and add okay so what that does you'll see the magic happen here if I brush that in and I hit it a couple times it, it brightens it each time just like multiply darkens it each time this brightens it each time but I don't know that I want it to turn white I kind of want the hottest part of this to be more of a yellow I think I think that's what I did on the last one so let me try this let me let me go to something darker and see what it does yeah so if I pick the same color the hottest point is more of a yellow so let's just sample the exact color and try that again yeah it's kind of white but it's still a little more of a yellow isn't it I think I'm colorblind, but um, no, that's still more of a white. What did I do that? I bet I started with an initially a darker color here. So let's do that. We're going to grab this layer and we're going to go to one of our sliders right here and we're going to darken that up. Okay, now let's try it again. Make sure that's the same color by holding and selecting and then our highlight brush will turn this into only red. Is there any yellow in there? Yeah, there's a little yellow. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Maybe I'll go just a little bit brighter with the painted color and see if that gives us a little bit more yellow. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm just looking for that initial effect just to save time once I get in here. So what I'm going to do is scale the brush down so you can obviously define a selection in here as well alright so this is probably I think this is how I started the effect 
So I went like this, kind of trace out that Kirby crackle effect a little bit, and then start with the brush larger, brush in a hot spot, something like that. And really what you can do is you can keep doing that, uh, you know, doing smaller increments. Again, this is like that cell shading effect, right? And keep doing that. You know, I, I don't like that as much. I think it looked better as a more kind of what I consider more of a painterly effect. So you can take the smudge brush and just smudge this around. See what that looks like. Again, it's all locked so you don't have to worry about it. But what happens here is you kind of get these neat little swirls, kind of like... I'm picturing like solar flare kind of look or whatever, which I don't know. Maybe his power doesn't really have that look in the comic. I'm just messing around here. But so you can try something like that, and it almost, uh, or not almost, it does build in some texture as you're applying this colorization effect. And I kind of like this where I don't want everything to be entirely cell shaded in the same way. I want some painterly effects. Sometimes I'll introduce texture. Uh, if you guys look at a previous video I just did of uh, Spidey, I'm pretty sure I shared that on here. I uh, hope I shared that on here. I'm pretty sure I did. I get pretty busy, so I don't know. But I I, I think I did. So I, I uh, added some texture in the brickwork of that Spider-Man piece. Uh, so again, it kind of breaks up the monotony. You know, I don't want things to appear too... Uh, too repetitive you know you're gonna have some of that in there based on your style choices and stuff like that but I like to I like to mix it up a bit when I can so something like that I'm not really digging that entirely yet but I can play around with the the brush size try to throw in some of these little flicks here and there mix it up and then I can go back and with the brush I can paint through this as well create more of a hot spot right through the middle so it tends to be how I I do power, I'll, I'll have a more focused area in the middle. Play around with that shape of it. And also I can take this and do the same thing for these little dots. Make that look kind of stellar. Just kind of dabbing at a couple area or hitting that in a couple successions there okay and let's make the brush a little larger brighten this all up a little more and then smudge it again I don't know, I'm really not liking that all of a sudden, but maybe I can make it better. I'll just keep going. You always get to that point in your art like, do I do I stop? Am I am I ruining it? Now, obviously it's digital, so I can't ruin it, but yeah, I don't know. I don't like that as much as I thought I would. Hmm. Maybe I can adjust the uh well, I gotta wait to adjust the color now because I got the eyes and all that. So I'm just gonna keep pressing forward. And so with the eyes, uh, you know, just a hot spot in the middle. Something like that. And then I remember what I did for the, um, this kind of billowing effect. It, it reminded me of, you know, smoke or whatever. So I think I just selected each one of these areas in between the lines. This is how I would shade or colorize smoke and then just uh, play around with different ways to highlight through the middle so some areas I go to the very edge other areas I go to one edge and I just really want this effect where uh, again it seems like it's kind of billowing so the highlight wouldn't be too repetitive you wouldn't put it on the same exact 
point on every side, I guess. That's the way I see it. Could be wrong there. That's just how I see it. But Man, I'm totally not digging the yellow now all of a sudden. But I need to finish uh, coloring this, and then I'll see if I can adjust that. So one way to think about this is if the coloring is not coming out the way you like, you can still think about it in terms of value. Okay, So I think value-wise, overall, I don't mind it. I just don't like the whole overly strong ketchup mustard feel that I get going on here. I think what happened is I went too red. Should have went orange to yellow. It would have been a little bit better with, you know, maybe hints of red, but yeah, I don't know. I really struggle visually with color. I just, I like to see my work colored, so I do it. But um, yeah, I, I struggle with the perception of it. I'm better with the... Um, the artwork itself I think so the you know the drawing and inking of it and I just like the color though so I I endure and you guys ask about coloring uh, tutorials so I bring them nonetheless I'm like hey if you guys like what I'm doing then I'm doing it but I will, I will not be dishonest I, I feel like I struggle in this department more than I should but hey that's that's all the more reason to keep at it so one day I will I will master the colorization process it will be mine oh yes it will be mine um, let's see what else I just got to keep repeating this so hopefully you see I'm trying to add a little bit on one side maybe flip over and add it to the other side so it again it looks like it's scrolling or billowing a little bit more And we can obviously hit the side of it as well. Now I do got to be a little careful because I have those lines in the background. But I think what I would do for those anyways is go around the perimeter shape like this. And bring those out a bit more. So I can do that while I'm here as well. Save this piece here. I think I used a different smudge brush on the first one too. That's another trick th uh, tricky thing about doing all this digitally, uh, especially when you're recreating a certain style. You have to really save your tools and remember what tools used where if you're looking for consistency. I mean, I think ultimately the main thing is that you just get good at making whatever you're doing at the moment work. Uh, you'll definitely have your very consistent tools, things like the soft brush versus a you know, pencil tool, your favorite pencil brush, whatever. Uh, but the other part of it is just, you know, if you're working on something that needs to match continuity through a book or whatever, it's really saving those tools so that you get that uh, similar look. But I imagine that works even in the traditional world as well. People lose art supplies all the time, right? It's notorious for traditional artists to lose art supplies. I do that on a daily basis. Where's my eraser? Who took it? Start yelling at people in the house. Just kidding. Just kidding. I would never do that. Never. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Almost there, folks. Yeah, I probably could have time lapsed this part. Well, you guys are always saying real time videos, Rob. Real time. You want to see how slow you are? Well, here it is. And it's kind of forcing me to realize how long I must have took on the initial piece, too. 
Now the beauty of Procreate is you can just look that up, but sometimes I choose not to because it uh, kind of can be kind of depressing. But I've been forcing myself to move a bit faster. Like this particular piece, um, I didn't draw it all the way. I did a rough sketch, then went right to inks. So as I mentioned um, in that Spider-Man video that I did share, uh, I, I mentioned that in there because I'm really trying to you know, speed up the process. And I think that's ultimately what digital art should be doing for you anyways. It, it should either be speeding up the process or making the work superior in some way, which I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe that it truly makes the work superior because, you know, traditional art just is, you know, I just still feel like you have more control with traditional art. But that's going to, you know, that's going to vary from person to person, obviously. Um, but as far as uh, being efficient, uh, I think digital is the way to go because, you know, like even this, I'd have to have an enormous amount of my tools at my side to do this piece from start to finish, like I'm penciling, inking, and coloring it, which uh, I would say is probably rare for most artists. They, they probably group up with other artists and, you know, get the best out of uh, each other's abilities, which is a smart call, obviously. And uh, that makes it faster, definitely. But knowing that I can do this entire piece inside this one software and be on the go, you know, take this with me wherever I go, uh, is pretty darn empowering. And that's really what got me into this, and that's, that's why you see me doing it now, because uh, I love being able to take my work with me and do this uh, anywhere. And without dragging around a, a box full of art supplies and paper and all that stuff, and I save my stuff to the cloud, so heaven forbid my iPad comes up missing, I don't even lose my artwork, which is pretty awesome. So I've, I've read some horror stories where people, uh, you know, took their work with them. You know, you might say, well, as a comic artist, you can take your pages with you. You can, but you lose them puppies, and yeah, it's going to be a bad day for everybody involved. I can't remember who it was, but I read, I read that they were, you know... I don't know if they were taking a vacation. It wasn't that. I think they were just taking them with them, you know, hitting like coffee shops and doing their work and stuff like that. I can't remember what the deal was, but they left them in the car and somebody had broken into the car and stole their pages. It was, oh man, it just sounded like a horrible story. I cannot remember who that was. It was a pretty well-known comic artist and, you know, I remember thinking that's, that would totally ruin my, uh, my month, my year, I don't know, it would it'd be bad. And the thing was, is I'm pretty sure, if I can remember the story right, that they were wrapping up a you know monthly title, and, it, and the, this happened towards the end of the month, so it totally ruined the deadline of the book, and yeah, so you can just imagine. But at least when you are working digitally, you can circumvent some of that, because you can uh, you can save your, your data to the cloud as you're working, and, uh, and that's what I do. I have this set up where it functions off my iCloud. So it's, it's constantly backing up uh, as I work. And I, and I save iterations of it, too, just to make sure. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Now, I don't have an original at the end of it, obviously. But uh, I'm not in jeopardy of losing all this time and effort. So yeah, pros and cons to everything though. One doesn't beat the other. In fact, I, I always tell people like, just because I teach digital art doesn't mean I don't do traditional art and I don't feel like one uh, replaces the other, that they should be, they should work um, together. You know, one should make the other better, not, not a this or that kind of thing. All right, so what else? Just keep picking at these old pieces. Okay, and then also I want to get some on the side of the face there, but let me finish a few more pieces of this. I'm really I could be going through and, and selecting more of this at once. Probably would save some time. Just because this is taking too long. I should already be done with this. And it probably would have been smarter to just draw some of this in. So that's another thing that you can do. Instead of trying to select too much, you can just brush more of it in. 
so I can make this brush smaller. I think I've already mentioned this, but just get some of these highlights in there. And I must have did something different than the first time because I don't remember it taking this long, but it could be just because I'm recording now, so I'm more aware of the time it's taking. I'm notorious for getting lost in my own artwork. Okay, so there's that. Yeah, let's just see if we can make this work. I hope we can because I put a bunch of time into it now. But yeah, so the part that's bugging me is I don't like the reddish... Um, you know, it's, it's like too much red. I don't know. It's starting to look more orange now that I've painted in more of that. But what I would do is just play around with the slider so you can go to color balance. And you can adjust, you know, the red-yellow combo of it. You know, maybe bring it out more yellowish. Yeah, I don't like that either. Let me go back. Okay, and then let's try hue saturation. No, this is gonna, oh, that's kind of fun though. We no, that's, that's not what I wanted either. I don't know, maybe I'll leave it alone for now. Let me get some of the other color in there and see if that helps. So the other thing I want is the color to uh, reflect off his face. Let me add in a layer and this should be over top of everything. And I'm just going to brush in some of this color right here. Something like that. So all this, I think it looks, uh, what I liked about it on the other piece is it, it made it a little more dramatic. I feel like this is a very dramatic character. So what else? Probably the little bit on the side of the nose there. Remember this brush is already set to highlight, so all they have to do is hit it a couple times and it will uh, it will start to bring out that other light source and, and the yellow. the side of the mouth as well. And probably off the armor. And where else did I put it? I think I put it on the back of the helmet as well. And I think what I'm going to do here is actually over apply the effect and then erase it back. Just to save time. That's not over that piece of the armor, is it? Let me go up one more. There we go. So yeah, some kind of um, making sure to pay attention to the fact that I'm spilling over into other areas of this. And then I can just go back with the soft erase. Clean that up a little bit. So like right there, side of this. even soften up some of the other areas like doesn't need to be as pronounced in every bit of this so just kind of 
Let's soft erase all that right there. I want it pretty strong against the side of the face, but these other areas I don't think as much. And remember too, I can affect this uh, with the layer opacity as well. Okay, what else? Uh, let's try a little bit of it just throughout. And we gotta think about bounce light. Hmm, what is it missing? It's missing something. I think the blue needs to be darker. Let's do that. So I'm going to jump over to the blue. Now keep in mind too, you know, you see we're getting pretty layer intensive. If that starts to occur, you have to kind of pick and choose your battles, figure out where, you know, you're kind of done working on a certain area, merge it down. So I could grab like the blue here, along with the highlights and the shadows, and I could just pencil those together. And there's all that. Um, yeah, see, I can get rid of that background now. It doesn't matter. So let's delete that layer. And so yeah, so there's the the blue of the armor, and it's just too plain. It's just not as uh, I think it's not as dark as it needs to be. Let's go over to hue saturation brightness. Let's tone down the brightness of it. I'm on the wrong layer, aren't I? Aren't I? Yes, I am. How does that happen? Okay, back over to here. My bad. And then tone down the brightness. And I don't know, I kind of like it saturated. Typically you want to bump back the saturation as well. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And then I'm realizing I haven't even touched the neck piece. So where's that at? That is part of, not this, not that. Where is that sucker? Where did I put his neck piece? Hmm. It's hard to see on these little, little uh, thumbnails. Oh, it's layer 11, isn't it? There she is. Okay, so let me lock that. I'm just gonna apply this right over top. So another way, if you don't wanna create another clipping mask, just set the airbrush to a shadow brush, which again is set to a pre-blending uh, mode. Right there, multiply. And then let's uh, select this color and let's shade this down so it doesn't look so unfinished. Like that. And then let's uh, get a little bit of cell shading in there. A little drop shadow right here. And then at least a little bit of light source. Let's go to highlight brush. A little bit brighter, probably doesn't need to be. And then let's just get a little bit of this highlight right here. It's funny trying to remember what steps she took in the previous example and recreating it. It's pretty funny, but um, but yeah, there's no right or wrong. You're really just trying to take hints from the uh, the line art. That's too vivid. Let's do this. Let's go back. But yeah, trying to take hints from the line art, obviously, and then bring it out, make it more pronounced. Oh, that's the smudge brush. Can okay, bring out this highlight right here. You know what? You can actually just drop in some paint and then smudge it over. Here we go. Too much I think that's good and put it right there okay so now let's see what we got here I think it's coming together so at this point I would really just keep picking at it right I would just keep 
you know, looking for the biggest problem area, something that doesn't look right. Like for instance, the red that um, managed to, you know, seep into this area, I would, uh, you know, kind of erase that back. So right here, I don't feel like there would be any highlight that would be getting into that area. I also feel like the highlight wouldn't hit this bottom edge here. So maybe just a larger brush, lower the opacity, and just slowly push that back a little bit. Uh, likewise, I might make it more intense, obviously where it's hitting. So let me grab that brush again, paint it back up here. So more solid in areas like this. I don't know about that spot. But Yeah, and then uh, let me see, maybe erase it back across the emblem here. Now the emblem I didn't shade as well, so what was that on? That was layer 11 too, I think. Yeah, so let's add a little bit of shading to this and then we'll wrap it up, call it good. Um, obviously we could take it a lot further, but I think everything's been explained in the way that I would do it, probably uh, a bit too in depth on this one. This is one long video, but hopefully you guys appreciate it. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, if you did manage to watch all this, and hopefully you got some uh, some good ideas for your own artwork through uh, through persevering through this very long video. So I'll just select a couple areas inside this emblem, add a little bit of highlight to that. So basically same old, same old. And let's see, use the highlight brush. Select that color. And then just remember the highlight brush is always going to brighten that up. So nice and easy. So now uh, just looking at it and really that, that red yellow is just too bright, too saturated. So let's go ahead and fix that now. All right. So with that, let's take these uh, layers that are the red and yellow. Uh, let's combine these together. So I'm going to drag and drop that here. Tap it. Click merge down. Uh, there's no blending mode, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm actually going to swipe over and duplicate it. And you see it, there's parts of it where it's transparent, so it actually intensified it. So you gotta be careful of that. But um, what I wanna do is I'll erase back the areas where I don't really like it being intensified as much. Really all over. But uh, the main thing is I'm making myself a copy uh, to go back, but also to control the saturation. So I'm gonna take the layer on the top and I'm gonna desaturate it uh, quite a bit. It's just too much. But then what happens is I would really pull this back to the area that I want the least saturated. Okay, so looking for the least amount of saturation. And then I can go back to this layer. So this really isn't a backup, honestly. Uh, and, but I can erase parts of it that I want to be a little more saturated. So then it, it just gives us a nice little you know, variation. So it's not all the same saturation throughout. And then again, I'd probably still feel the need to just erase parts back. There's just parts that are just too solid, too, too much. I think that's a little bit better. I also feel like his skin needs to be a little bit darker. So again, like I mentioned about um, once you get things where you like them, you can really you know, condense things down. I can pinch those together. Now I've got just the skin on one layer. I can go into hue saturation, levels, all that good stuff. And I can just darken that down a little bit. See how that looks. I think maybe I do want to do it with the levels there. So let's try that and go back. Uh, let's try curves. I'm gonna play with this Bezier uh, handle. Notice that you can punch up the, the highlights, you can darken the shadows. Then let it go and then see if, you know, like oftentimes we'll do a two finger tap undo and then a redo and go back and forth. And then check it from a distance. I feel like that's too much, it's basically, um, I think I liked it better just by going to the uh, hue saturation and just dropping the brightness down just a little bit right about there. 
and that's really it. So I would just go through and keep uh, adjusting the uh, the layers and the sections of it like that and get the overall finished work that I like. Remember too, another final thing that you can do is you can do a three finger swipe down, hit copy all. Usually takes a minute and I might have too many layers. Let's see here, copy all. Nope, there we go, paste. Now what this does, it takes a visual snapshot of the whole thing and it flattens all those together. So you can put that right above the line art. Uh, you can do a lot of things really. You could even put the line art over top of this and color your line art. I'm not gonna do that in this particular piece because this video is already too crazy long, but just keep that in mind that you can now merge everything together and then you can do your, your uh, color editing a little bit differently on this one layer, make copies of this one and adjust things uh, overall. So like you could duplicate this and then you could do your hue saturation, drop it you know, throughout the whole thing. Uh, again, you could make a, a duplicate first and then erase parts of this back. So if you want the saturation to show through in just specific areas, again, it's kind of a cheat for correction layers since uh, it doesn't really have um, correction layers that I'm aware of yet. So, um, so yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what you think. More content is on the way very soon. And uh, check the links below if you want to check out my Skillshare, Procreate brushes, all that fun stuff. Always appreciate the support. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.